Hey everyone, it's that time of the week again. Let's find out what's scrobbling. Uh, this, if you don't know what scrobbling is, it's basically where Last FM will look at your listening history and tell you all about what you've been listening to, what sort of albums and artists and songs you've listened to most, and you can get all kinds of cool analytics on it. And you can do it over all kinds of different time frames. So you can do it over the past seven days or over the past month or over the entire time you've been scrobbling. I hope you guys have had a good week. Mine has been horrendous. Just kidding. It was fine. My week was fine. Um, without further ado, let's get into what the top scrobbled artists are this week. And to start off this list, we're going to be talking about, for probably the last time, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I know that they've been popping up like a lot the past three weeks or so, but I I just love this band. Like I just can't put them down, and I just go through these phases where I just want to listen to them. And plus, um, if you weren't aware, they released a new album on Thursday out of nowhere called Sketches of Brunswick East, which is their third of uh, five supposed albums this year. And I'm going to be reviewing that soon, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but I will say um, it's pretty great. Like, this streak of amazing albums has got to end sometime soon, right? Right? Ah, oh, well. Next up on our list, let's pull it up. Uh, Leprous has shown up again. Uh, this is another band that I just can't put down. I, I don't know what it is about them, but their sound is just so dense. Like, all, all of their ideas are so dense musically, and uh, it takes a whole bunch of listens to really get the gist of a song. And even then, it still kind of feels like it hasn't really divulged everything that it has to offer. And that's one thing that I love about Leprous' sound, especially on their album Cole. Because on this album, they have such a skeletal, almost, and like stripped back sound. There isn't a bunch of like weird stuff filling in the space. There's a lot of negative space that they use there. But at the same time, these songs feel so like musically dense. And it's just kind of amazing. And I'm also very excited for their new album, which is coming out on Friday, called Melina. There's all kinds of cool uh, progressive metal coming out recently. We've got this new Leprous, we've got new Caliglio's Horse, and today there was a new Anubis Gate track released. And so I'm very excited for that. I'm giving it a little more time because uh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sold on it yet, but I had the same sort of feeling when I was listening to Never Like This back when uh, Horizons was about to come out. I wasn't entirely like crazy about it but i'm gonna stay optimistic for this new album anyway let's get back to our list next up is rings of saturn again so uh i really love ulta ula like i like this a lot more than i expected it to it's just so much fun i'm just having a hard time putting it down like what they do when they do it right they do it so well like even though i'm not a huge fan of deathcore uh, i still find a lot to love about this band but yeah this band is great they have a lot to offer, and I'm super excited for whatever they come out with next. All right, next on our list, we have Skeleton Witch. So these guys are a blackened thrash metal band. They write these really short songs that are really fast-paced and intense. And uh, the last album that I was really into was Serpents Unleashed, back before they got their new vocalist, who isn't bad, but I just really didn't feel compelled to check out songs from the Apothic Gloom too much. I did like the one single that they released where they sent the limited edition shirt, which, which I have as well. Uh, I was really into that song. But uh, I don't know, like the other songs that I heard just didn't really do much for me. Maybe I should give him more of a fair chance and see what sort of sound Skeleton Witch is going for now. But uh, I don't know, I just haven't been compelled to do it. But I'm a big fan of this uh, Serpents Unleashed. It's really fun, it's really short, and it's very intense. I'm a big fan of the drumming on it as well. And... Uh, the, the sort of like belchy vocals that the vocalist does are really interesting. I, I just really like this album. I've been spinning it for a couple of years now. And um, I don't know, I'm excited for Skeleton Witch to put out a uh, new full length album so that we can really get a feel for uh, their new vocalist. His voice is a little different than uh, their, their previous vocalist who had a very belchy, like, like almost like he was vomiting kind of voice. But this guy has a much more uh, like straightforward kind of shriek. Uh, like like a between like a yell and a shriek, and I'm a big fan of that kind of vocals. So uh, I think he's going to be able to do a lot with Skeleton Witch's sound. All right, after Skeleton Witch, we have Thank You Scientist again. So uh, one of my, I was telling one of my friends about Thank You Scientist, and a few days later he brings them up, and I'm like, yeah, they are a pretty cool band. I'm going to listen to them again. Like just like hearing him talk about it, I was like, man, they they are really good. Like. <laughs> 
I really love uh, the, their style of music. I love the the fusion of jazz and oh, this sort of pop punky rock together. It just it's a lot of fun, and the way that they do it just seems so idiosyncratic. You know, I haven't ran into any other bands that really do it in the same way that Thank You Scientist does. It's such an even mix of uh, jazz music and rock music, and it just sits in this really really nice sort of area. On top of having these really sweet vocals, which kind of remind me of uh, Cedric Bixler Zavala from the Mars Volta, I get a lot of vibes from that, along with uh, a bit of um, Coheed and Cambria. But that's more in the instrumentation. All right, after Thank You Scientist, we have Elder. So Elder released their latest album called Reflections of a Floating World a few, couple months ago. And I really love the sound that they have. The only problem that I have with this album is that the tracks themselves don't are, feel kind of directionless by the end of them. And what I mean by that is by the end, you expect it to like you, you enter like a segment and you think it ends, but then it looks, turns out you have like four extra minutes. And so you're kind of like ready for like the next song to come on. And it's like, oh no, we have a little more of a bit of a jam session to do for you. And the endings that they do choose are just very arbitrary and that's one thing that I really bugs me about their sound is that um, you're just listening to a track and it sounds like they're jamming out and then all of a sudden it just ends and you don't expect it to end. And I just don't really care for that. Like I would love this like a thousand times more if, uh, if they could figure out how to make their songs more cohesive and more full of direction as opposed to sounding like a, a jam session, which I mean, it's, it's fine because all the parts by themselves are great. It's just that when you try to listen to it as a whole, it kind of uh, doesn't really work out very well. Next on our list, we have Dragon Force. So I released a lore album a little bit uh, last week. And when I was listening to one of the choruses, I was really, really struck with this uh, feeling of Valley of the Damned style choruses, especially on the title track. It has that same sort of uh, like sort of yelling, singing with the, the same style of production. It's very warm. Very nice, and uh, this is probably my favorite Dragon Force album. I'm, I'm not gonna lie; I'm a huge fan of Dragon Force. I've been into them since I was like 13. They, they were one of the first metal bands that I metal bands that I really got into. Although I didn't really consider them that at the time. That was uh, far before I sort of got a grasp on uh, what exactly metal is. But they're they're still a pretty great band, even though uh, you know they've had some live debacles and all of that. Like I'm a big fan of their music. I think it's very fun, it's very cheesy, and I'm just super into that. I really love just incredibly cheesy music, like, especially if it's kind of pushed to a point of, like, ridiculousness. I just think that's a lot of fun, and that's why I'm a big fan of bands like Pathfinder. Okay, after Dragon Force, we've got Mirker. Oh, man. So, Mirker released a new single recently, and I was in love with it. It has that same style of sort of atmospheric black metal that maybe Dreams of Nature or a really sped up Eldemar would go for. And with Mirker's vocals, it's just, it sounds so good. Um, oh, God, I can't quite remember what it's called now. It's like Olvanda or something like that. And uh, she really kicks ass on this track. And so it kind of inspired me to go back and look into her back catalog. And... I was really impressed with what I heard. I don't really know why I kind of slept on her for this long, but Mir Mirker's got it going on. Like, she's she's pretty awesome. And I look forward to whatever she puts out next because I know she recently put out a live album, and I suppose she's working on a new, uh, new re full-length release. Uh, so we'll see. I'm excited for whatever she puts out, though. All right, after Mirker, we've got Spawn of Possession. Uh, if you've been following uh, metal news lately, then you've learned that uh, Spawn of Possession, which is a one of the prominent tech death bands, kind of decided to just break up, like, out of nowhere. And this is a band that I've been sleeping on for a very long time. And so I decided to give Incurso a listen. And while I do really love parts of it, there is something about the production when I was listening to it that kind of uh, turned me off. Like, it made it hard for me to really get into it. And maybe I'm just not giving it a fair chance, and maybe I need to give it a few more spins before I can really decide my thoughts on Incurso, but uh, I really want to see what all the buzz is about, because I've heard people say that this is the best death metal, tech death album of all time, like one of the best ones. And so I would like to see how it stands up to some of my tech death favorites, such as uh, Worms' uh, Krig Zoo, and Illustrium's A Tunnel to Eden, and... Uh, 
a couple of others like in that same vein. And to wrap up our list, we have Tears for Fears. Uh, I'm a big fan of this uh, style of like new wave, like 80s music. I think that it, it goes along with the whole like cheese thing. I'm, I'm a big fan of just really cheesy music. And not only is Tears for Fears like pretty cheesy, but their songs are like a lot of fun. And the vocalist is really, really talented. He has an awesome voice. And especially on songs like The Working Hour, which is probably my favorite by them, he hits these really high-pitched vocals that are, sound really, really nice, and it's com it's complemented by the saxophone throughout the track, and this really, really nice, beautiful uh, guitar lead that sounds like so watery. This is the best way to describe it. It's kind of like that sort of tim timbre that you have with uh, a fretless bass, like when Jaco Pastorius plays it. He has that he has that sort of like watery sound. I can't really. That's the best way I can describe it. All right, I think that wraps up this segment. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. If you have any requests for me to listen to or if you have any albums that you want me to look at, uh, I would love to give them a listen. Just uh, send me a message my way, and uh, you can find me on Facebook and all of that, and uh, just send me anything that you'd like me to listen to. Or if uh, you have any thoughts on any of the bands that I talked about today, like I would love to know your thoughts. I'm always happy to start a discussion with people about what they, they think about these kinds of bands. All right, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you guys next week.